This video is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock. Hello, and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and today in the arena, Esper Hero. I need a hero. So many hero songs. I could totally just rattle off if I were some kind of a musical channel. This is Esper Hero, and there are actually so many different blue, white, and esper decks I want to try that I usually try to pace these out over several weeks, but since I'm interested in, in them now, and since the meta will eventually settle, and I'm not sure if it will settle in a place that's great for this style, then I'm, I should just do it. I should play the decks I want to do. And something else I might do more of is just kind of do very similar decks, but with a few different card choices to show how different card choices in a deck lead you down a different path and change other deck building ideas about the deck, things of that nature. So, for example, I did a Rakdos deck yesterday. I have like three very similar Rakdos decks. One's more built for aggro, one's more built for discard, and one's the kind of mid-range all-in sacrifice-y thing. So I, I kind of think I might, we'll probably do some content where I play a very similar deck, but I say these card choices led to this, 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 and that's why it doesn't play this, this, and this. In this case, in Esper Hero, the reason I use that intro is because Hero Precinct 1 is the major card in the deck that the rest of the deck hovers around. Hero Precinct 1 is very good when it can come down on turn 2, the opponent doesn't kill it, and then you play a bunch of gold cards, so you get, in a way, a free 1-1 one, one human creature token every turn for the rest of the game until something bad happens to the hero. The hero does add a few deck building constraints. One of them is that you need to play a bunch of gold cards, but gold cards in Esper are pretty great, so that's hardly a downside. The other thing about Hero Precinct 1 that takes the deck in some different directions normally is that it requires you, in a way, to play at sorcery speed. You can't play a draw-go game around Hero Precinct 1 very easily because you have to deal with their board. When you tap out to play your hero, they will play a creature. Now you have to deal with their creature, and that taps you out and so forth. And the other thing that you usually can't do when you play Hero Precinct 1 is play Wrath of God, sweeper effects area of something, AOE, area of effect, yeah, that's it. So normally in a Hero Precinct 1 deck, you have no counters and no sweepers. However, everybody knows that. All of the, all the tryhards up there in Mythic, they know, they think they know what goes in your Hero Precinct 1 deck. And what ends up happening is when they see Hero Precinct 1, they don't play around, say, absorb, and you get them. They don't play around Time Wipe, and you get them. And it's uh, actually kind of glorious when people aren't prepared for your Esper Hero list in the way that you've actually constructed it. Time Wipe can bounce back your hero or your Atris, Atris, Mr. Half-Truth, or something of that nature, or your Dream Trawler, if that's what's running away with the game. Speaking of those other creatures, they're pretty good. This card, I recently went down to recommending that you craft a zero because elite guard mage is better in a number of matchups anyway where the life really matters especially in best of one but overall i've come to appreciate this card a lot this card is even more effective if you're able to bounce it than the elite guard mage is at sheer card um quantity so being able to bounce it with a time white makes it a lot better being able to bounce it with Tyrant Scorn makes it a lot better. So when I play a little bit more around with how to maximize the Oracle of Half-Truths, surprise, surprise, the card does a lot more work than I expected it to do. Dream Trawler, of course, continues to be a house that people are discovering just what an absolute monstrosity this card is, and there are a lot of decks that are not built to deal with it. But on the subject of dealing with it, maybe someday they'll run this card. Consecrate consume exile a card from a graveyard draw card is just fine right now in the format but how about four mana a player sacrifice a creature with the greatest power among creatures they control you gain life equal to its power so it's a targeted missile for these dream trawlers and any other hex proofy type things in the format it's also another way to kill this deck's arch nemesis which is questing beast we don't have many consume can do it so can mortify so can time wipe and so can Ashiok if their hand is empty, but Questing Beast 
is such a huge problem for this deck, it's disgusting. So if you're trying to prioritize what to remove or what to kill, Questing Beast is the answer. In the mana base, I have some temples. I'm still not sure that you need them or that I shouldn't just be playing basics and castles and three Fable Passage, but nothing of too much note there. This deck has been doing pretty well for me. I'm excited with this version of the list because people don't know what to play around. And yeah, I think you'll find it a lot of fun. Let's go dive in and let the nonsense begin. Okay, I, I was worried that game wasn't going to fire. There was something weird going on. This hand is really slow and it's on the draw. But it does have the right mana. We do have a scry. We do have some critters. We could get run over pretty bad. But I don't think you want to turn away pretty good mana. And obviously if we draw a Thought Erasure, a Hero Precinct 1, or a Tyrant Scorn, we're in pretty much any game. Well, the opponent didn't play a, a turn one creature. Maybe I don't need this. After drawing the Oath of Kai, I have another removal spell anyway. Our opponent might be some kind of a simicky, flashy thing. Or a Leafkin Druid. All right, being on the draw, this is where it really hurts because we have to play a tap land instead of removing this thing with an Oath of Kaya. And I have a feeling that's gonna result in some difficulty. Okay, double Druid. So they're setting up to play Nissa next turn, which I don't have a good answer for. I'm too far behind already. Like I said, this hand is slow. Hopefully we can find some threats and surgically, precisionly remove them, and the opponent doesn't have their big snowball-y type effect. Because if they are missing the snowball, we'll be okay. Okay, we're not okay. Not okay at all. Hmm. If we can get our opponent out of cards in their hand, then bouncing the Nissa can be good. So in a way, letting them, like, because we have the Ashiok, so we need them to play their last two cards. That's a good way to get them to do that. Maybe if I run out at trees, it will reveal a Thought Erasure and the opponent will feel like they have to do that. Of course, if they have Krasis, their draw was always better than ours. No Thought Erasure either. A Thought Erasure for their Nissa probably would have gone a long way. Oh well. Huh. What are you? Hero. Yeah, Hero early would have done a lot too. Oh well. Alright, Nylea. Well, that can put cards in the opponent's hand if they have the mana. So that makes me nervous. Still be an aggro. All right, may as well trade. You're not gonna do anything. Oh, they can use this ability, which isn't honestly a great ability, but it hits immediately. <laughs> so it's a great ability. Never mind. what am I talking about? Obviously I know nothing. So does the opponent they have a forest on top of their deck and they kept it. Crap. They still have enough mana to replay Nissa. I do have a Thought Erasure. So they're going to draw land, reanimate Nit, and just play Nissa and animate again if I play the Ashiok. Yeah. We just didn't have it, did we? Well... Let's try to get down the hero, tack the hand a little bit, try to empty it out. Maybe we can get the opponent to do the wrong thing. These are pretty expensive, so we'll take the Cavalier. Next turn we could have a Dream Trawler. What's the difference between having six mana and five? I think we have to draw better. It's just really unlikely we can get them empty-handed. They're gonna play and raise four runners here, maybe. And then I lose. That's fine too. 
Well, we lost to turn through, like, just an accelerated Nissa that we couldn't do anything about. It happens. If I had kept Tyrant scored, maybe we could have. I guess that was the big mistake. All right. Well, another super slow hand that's not going to do much. Let's play it. <laughs> I don't know what's up with these draws today. They're just nice and slow. Oh, yeah, I could mulligan. I hate mulliganing. You guys probably know this by now. I'm one of the more reluctant to mulligan players out there. All right. Well, maybe we just take Gross Spiral and leave them with nothing to do on turn two. Risen Reef obviously is something that can spiral. Euro is obviously a pain. I guess I don't have easy removal for the reef right now. Yeah, um. Hmm. But the reef does at least die to time wipe eventually. It's an interesting choice. Reef also dies to most of the removal in my deck. Well, still, I think I take it now since I don't have an easy answer. Concentrate Consume? That can get the Euro out of the graveyard. Is that important to me? It's not bad. It at least lets me do something on their turn three, whereas otherwise I wouldn't have anything to do. So, Saltai Ramp. I've seen this here and there. Usually I don't see Murderous Rider and Ritual Soot. I just see Casualties of War. Hopefully we draw a playable once we exile the Euro from their graveyard. So that our turn four isn't complete crap. Atreus would be great. Atris. Atarish. Ataris. I, the Ataris. I've called him the Ataris a few times. That's that's a band. Aha. Mm, why are you scrying before you crack your fabled passage, bro? What the hell is this? Yeah, keep it on top. It's about to get awkward in here. <laughs> Been there. Been there. Oh darn. Well, I'm sure the opponent will draw it anyway. Never punished, much like my video. Did you draw the land? Yep. The land machine at work. Fine. We'll just do it now. I really want to play to make next turn. I would love to do it in response to the escape getting used, but I just don't know if I can line it up right. Opponent will probably ritual soot or murderous rider this, and that's fine. I mean, actually, they need another black, don't they? Hype. And that land drop. Okay, so the Cavalier's got to go. You can keep all that other crap. This can go in the graveyard because we need to draw land right now. Right freaking now, everybody. Thought Erasure wasn't the worst thing there, but it does feel really bad to be my hand of like all the five and six drops of my deck right now. We'll block because the opponent will sweep this up eventually. There's no reason not to, really. They're gaining three life. It's not like I can race them. All right, Haven can make another green. A. Hey. Let's see if this guy can find us some land going three deep. I don't think that I want to trade my hero and my trees for the Yarrick. Not when I'm probably about to time wipe or Ashiok it anyway. Take those lands. I do need them. The opponent makes me bin another one of these. Okay, this can wait. We can play this now, or we can fetch a black just so that we don't draw too many lands. <laughs> Would I double block? I'll at least let my opponent think I might. We'll see if they still attack. The longer this is on the battlefield, the worse it is for us. Here's a double scry off one land. Arr, not good. But Ashiok coming down and sending... Yarrick back a few times can be good. All right, we've got to keep on top. we got to keep her. The Haven can make a wolf. Maybe the opponent wants to do that since they have nothing else to do. Oh, they're coming at me. All right. 
I'm not actually going to double block. I just wanted to know how how feisty they felt. They feel aggressive, and they're afraid of my hero. Ooh, could just slam a dream trawler. They have a murderous rider. They're probably going to draw a Cavalier of Thorns. I think we have to set this back. I think that things might spiral very badly if we don't. Sure. Bouncing Yarrick to the infinity and beyond. Bouncing our Atreus seems okay. Now the opponent might want to use Murderous Rider on the Ashiok. What are you going to exile? It's got to be one of the Rituals of Soot. I think the super bold play would be to exile the Ashiok, assuming you won't get value out of it anymore now that I have my mana. And you know that my hand is pretty expensive toys. Or they could know that. Murderous Rider. I think it's a good time to get ahead with a dream a dream trawler, excuse me. If we hold this island, the opponent will never try to target the dream trawler because they know I can give it hexproof. And they don't want to trade their spell for an island. Yep, there goes the hero. Plenty of fun stuff to go. Get him. Kill him. Troll him. Let's also get the Ashiok cooking. This game looks like it's gonna be over. Opponent has to have a huge comeback mechanism. Casualties of war is an option. Eat to extinction. Sure. A lot of control in this Sultai deck. An elemental shell with a lot of spot removal. And some sweepers. Hmm. It hasn't lined up well against our Esper list so far. And I don't think that's going to change. Yep. Leonidas of the 300. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Lots of options. Red, but no creature yet. Yeah, let's not turn down a powerful card when we have all the land to play it. Red, black, blood, aspirant. So whenever you sacrifice a permanent, put a plus one, plus one counter on the blood aspirant. Two in a red, sacrifice a creature or enchantment, one damage to a creature, and it can't block. Welcome to the cat oven, but maybe we can get their oven out of their hand right now with a thought erasure. Aldrin familiar, slaughter priest, slaughter pr No, yeah. So this is whenever you sacrifice a permanent, plus two, plus oh until end of turn. Here's the cat. If that's in the graveyard, they just get it back, so that's not a big deal. This is the most expensive card that they can't cast right now with a single red, so it's the best to fairy target. I'm going to take one of these. Ooh. Well, if I shock next turn, it lets me play a little bit of a Drago game and counter something possibly important or make them lose some tempo. I'll keep it. We're going to take a lot of damage. It's kind of weird that they played this first to me. So it says, sacrifice a creature and give this first strike. So it can hit pretty hard. Hmm, actually, we can't play this at all this turn. We don't have the right mana. I hate it when I mess that up. I always forget that Swamp doesn't cast Absorb. It's just another one of the silly things I do. 
So I'm thinking now what I'm going to fetch with this fabled passage, and I think it means I want to play the grave now. If I fetch a white, I could also fetch an island and have absorb available. All right, let's see what the opponent does for the beatdowns. And take out their slaughter priest. Unfortunately, they decide to go for this anyway. I was hoping they'd give me a break. But yeah, I'm I'm in some trouble. We'll kill this now before this resolves. We'll play this, bounce this. Then Ashiok will try to get a footing. And this absorb will have to do something. There's a good card. Okay, so now the new plan is to buy time until Trawler comes down and let Trawler kind of take over the game with its lifelinkiness. So we can play Ashiok, bounce Annex. Then we can play Trawler. And the opponent probably can't deal, quite frankly. So I don't think ticking up to make a nightmare makes a lot of sense. The opponent very well can have claimed the firstborn, act of treason, the Akroan War, the ways to steal my things. Makes sense in a sacrifice deck. That's annoying. <laughs> free, free pips off the sacrifice? No! Well, if you wanted evidence that fetch lands aren't coming back when we get to Zendikar, those of you who really study magic, I think this card is a good, pretty good indicator that they're not going to do that. There's claim. All right. Let's go, trolls. You got to win this game for me. That's not good. But I guess you've only got one sacrifice outlet. And you can target this so it can't block. That's pretty frustrating. If I were the opponent, I, yeah, I would make it so that this can't block sacrificing Cauldron Familiar. I would give the Mayhem Devil haste with the claim the firstborn, and I would hit me really hard. So I could make this hexproof, but it taps it, so it still wouldn't be able to block. So I think I'm gonna lose this game based on keeping an absorb I couldn't cast. Well, they didn't use the claim. That's the bright side. We've got to draw something that deals with one of these. That's not... That doesn't deal with anything. So we've got to draw something, because we won't be able to block. All right. It's a thing. It's not a good thing. It doesn't actually do much. got to make a token. Maybe we have to get our opponent to play a spell. Is it worth paying two life? I guess surveilling the top of my deck isn't the worst idea either. Teferi, what do you do? I mean, you can bounce that thing, so I get another turn where maybe I can block with my trawler. We'll give it a try. Yes. Needed that. Needed something to go our way right there. Opponent feeling spiteful, trying to figure out what to sacrifice to do the thing. This little synergy here is annoying. Uh-huh. Now that can't block. You can pick... What are you doing? What are you targeting? Okay. So you're killing the hero. Yep. Opponent felt vindictive. They're mad. They mad I gained some life. So let's do a block here. Next turn I can bounce this. Or this. Right now the opponent can't sacrifice anything. I think I just take this one and leave the other one one. We're going to try to close with this Dream Trawler. We're going to try to lifelink race. 
But bouncing this keeps it from activating for a turn. Resets the counters, which I think is pretty good. Ooh, baby. If only I had one more mana. Another card. Make it a good one. It's not. A lot of unused mana on this turn. But the opponent in the danger zone. And they top deck a land, so I'm feeling okay. That's the thing about Dream Trawler. Sometimes the card just wins. Go and face. I'll take another block while I can. As soon as the opponent can sacrifice something to kill this, it won't get this block, so we may as well do it. Mortify. Get him. Keep going, Baneslayer 2.0. Ah, oh, that's Lyra. 20 to 5. Opponent has a lot of good options. Whenever this or a non token creature dies, create a 1 1 Seder. Can't block. Mayhem Devil. Yeah, having Mortify up, I think, matters a lot. Let's play you. We could also. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I could play this and have Mortify up, but the problem is the opponent just targets it and makes it unable to block. Not that that might be particularly important. I think this will win the game next turn no matter what. Actually, you know what? It might not, because cat. So if the opponent gets a way to like recycle the cat. So yeah, we should do this. We should make sure that we can close next turn. I don't think they can kill me, so I should make sure I can kill them. They already saw an absorb, so that's something they have to feel a little nervous about. And yep, Leonidas backing down with his 300 this time. Rathziel. Rathziel. Hmm. I always wonder with these hands, do I, when do I crack the passage? Is it the turn one crack, or do I try to avoid paying two life and make it the turn four? Honestly, fetching a basic early usually gets me in trouble, and drawing this always, of course, takes care of it. So, tap land. On the draw is where I'm not sure if I want to play hero, then thought erasure, or just thought erasure. Uh-oh, knights. Do I have time for a hero? So I can go Hero into Teferi into Thought Erasure Scorn if I have all blue and black mana. So I'm fetching a Swamp with this passage. Yeah. I can make that work. We do have the Time Wipe. Might get them. Nobody plays around the Time Wipe in their Knight's deck. So does the opponent spend their turn dealing with the Hero? That's, that's a good question. Uh, they go straight to the dino. So they can't ember cleave me next turn, and the one ones I make with hero are great blockers for this card. So what we'll do is we'll play our Teferi. And we're going to bounce the Stormfist Crusader, not the Regisaur. They can't ember cleave with only one creature. And they usually have no other way to give it trample. And without the extra card draw, the discarding becomes a more serious cost. And the one ones can take on the dino. At least for this turn. Until Embercleave is an option. With Teferi on the board, Embercleave isn't an option until they have to pay six mana for it, which is another reason to try to set your Teferi up for success. Block. I am always amazed that creatures like seven sixes don't have trample, but the card certainly didn't need more stats. Crusader returns. If my hero lives, things are pretty good. Unfortunately, that Stormfist Crus the two Stormfist Crusaders is pretty annoying. So we could Tyrant Scorn one of them, Thought Erasure the opponent's hand. 
We could also Oath of Kaya, take out one of them, have a 1-1 one, one to block a Regisaur, and play a tap land. I think we want to accumulate multiple spells. If we have two tokens, they can block the Crusader. The hero could block the Regisaur if we wanted. We could also Tyrant Scorn the Regisaur. But I still think the best thing to do is really wear this dinosaur out, get the card advantage from them discarding as much as possible. So destroy you, make a token, mark this for a stop, no attacks, and turn. Activate the things the opponent has to discard. Then they're going to draw. Then they're going to draw for their turn. Then we're going to Thought Erase their hand after they have made these decisions and picked up all the extra cards they're going to pick up. That's when you Thought Erase. thing we want to get the most is anything that would remove the hero, I think. Anything that would remove any of these blockers is probably the top priority. Murderous Rider, that counts, but they don't have the black source to play it. Knight of the Ebon Legion. They play that, we can remove it with Oath of Kaya. Blacklands Paragon is instant speed and awkward. I think it's actually the Murderous Rider, even though they don't have the Black Source. Although I guess I can take away their double spell if I take one of these two. So I'll take the Paragon, maybe? Okay, feels weird, feels weird. But I'm not as worried about their Murderous Rider if I get another turn. I just want to make some trades here. For example, I think what the opponent's going to do now is attack me with both. I can double block the Crusader and get it off the field and take seven. The opponent will then play the Knight. The Knight will get a plus one, plus one counter. I think they're going to hold the Murderous Rider, but maybe they won't. Ah, they're going to get back Gutter Bones, which they can't play, so that used their black mana. But this is a good Oath of Kaya target, and they still can't get through the Regisaur. Ah. Hmm? Hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to take the seven here and get rid of their Stormfist Crusader. So now if they're not drawing two cards a turn, they can't draw the land and the Ember Cleave. So I'm safe for at least another turn cycle from getting cleaved. Which means my 1-1 one, one can block the Regisaur just fine. So we want to play Oath of Kaya, kill the knight. And I guess I don't have any other plays, so I may as well use a Scryland. Another hero. I mean, it's action. I may as well keep action. May as well. And I will keep you back. If the opponent draws a black there and I attack with this, there may be the option of removing the token. We don't want that. <laughs> if the opponent can remove the token and either kill Teferi or hit my face, that would be pretty bad. We don't want to go there. So I'll block with this hero if I have to, especially now that I know there's another one. Butter bones. Hello, butter bones. Ooh, that triggers Oath of Kaya. And for no gain. Hmm. So still, our opponent can't draw the lands and the mana to, to Embercleave. So we're still in good shape. White, white, blue, blue. Pay two. Here's the trolls. Let's get that going. And again, I'll block with this if I have to. But the opponent chooses to concede. 
I think that game was a good example of when you can use Teferi to make sure that they're not Ember Cleaving you, then you can just wear them out with their own Rotting Regisaur. There really aren't any other ways in this deck typically in Rakdos Knights to give the Dinosaur Trample. So being able to make a token every turn to block it, you can just trade that for a card in their hand every turn and just wear them down. So this can be our white source. We can't cast the Absorb, but we do have the Oaths. If our opponent is aggressive, and many are, our hand is okay. I'll keep it. Temple. Maybe they're not aggressive, but if they're a Doom Foretold deck, which is what I immediately think when I see these temples, then Oath of Kai is still pretty good. Guess I'll go get my white source and not... Well, I don't have a two drop anyway. I'll play this tapped. Maybe we'll draw another land and I can make a more informed fetch with my passage. Like, if I draw a white source, I'll want a blue. Yeah, here's birth. All right. Okay, we definitely want white. And we can do it now. So that we have the option to run out Oath of Kai next turn. Doom foretold. Oath of Kai is a good card to have. That's not good. Let's see what they take. Are they more afraid of the Absorb or the Dream Trawler? Most people would pick the Counterspell, even though I can't cast it. They really don't like counter spells. Hero. Well, we're going into the Doom Foretold turn. Let's lead with the Oath. Just so we have something to sacrifice to a Doom Foretold to make it awkward. I don't know it's a Doom Foretold deck, but I know that's generally what these are built around. Run out the Hero. Don't know if Time Wipe's ever going to be great. Don't know if our opponent has any in... Well, there's blue. They are going to dance of the manse. Do you know you can dance if you wanna? Alright. Just gonna go face here. I don't care about this wall too much. He'll die eventually. So now the opponent has to have another thing to sacrifice to their Doom Foretold. Oh, they have the best thing to sacrifice to their Doom Foretold. What a champion. Do we make them have their Kai's Wrath? Oh my god. This game is over. I can't beat draw six from that position. What do you do? Nothing. Yeah, let's make them have the Kai's Wrath. Maybe they didn't find it. If they didn't find the Kai's Wrath, we have a chance. I know, I didn't even attack for my one damage. I'm a horrible magic player. Let's just say my uh, heart is saddened by what I'm seeing. Second Doom, that'll do as well. Well, we're on the play. And we might draw land. So, we keep this hand. This is probably where we want to be with the deck, to be honest. We have a Scry and a Surveil to try to hit our land drops. And I will keep any land at this point, even another tap land. Knight, right away. So do we go in for the Thought Erasure Surveil when we might not be able to do anything next turn? I don't think so. I think we have to be able to keep up with the board. But we can erase things later. Only land. Land is the only thing I'm keeping. That's frustrating because it makes our Oath of Kaya a lot worse. Hmm. We could try to set up Teferi to bounce the oven and Thought Erase it. Not too proud for that, I suppose. Oath of Kaya here, the life gain gets countered, but we could get the knight off the battlefield. The real question is, what is their follow-up? If I play a Teferi and plus it, what does the opponent do? We could pump the knight and attack the Teferi. I guess I'd welcome that to some extent. I don't even have to decide now. I can use a Mortify. Yeah, let's do that. Let's say go and set up a Mortify. Yeah. 
The opponent might be afraid of a counter spell, and they are. Making this Mortify perfect. Takes their whole turn, because they went for the pump because they were afraid of getting something countered. The squeeze, you might call it. Alright, so now we can play Teferi and plus Teferi. Unless the opponent has a murderous rider, that would be really bad, but potentially we could bounce the oven and body race it next turn. Could also bounce their food right now and draw a card. Figuring out how to beat the oven is tough. I guess if my opponent spends their whole turn on Murderous Rider, I can follow up with Ashiok. That feels pretty good. But I guess if they're going to do that, I may as well bounce their oven anyway, because if they don't replay it, if they miss their land drop, I still get to draw a card. Set up double black. There are plenty of times you want to resolve two cards with black and blue. So they have the land drop and the rider, and they get to replay the oven. That's annoying. All right, now we'll thought erase and make sure that they don't have another way to remove the Ashiok, since we're down to that as being our threat that we need to win the game. Gray Merchant, Ayara, Spawn of Mayhem. The spawn is the hardest thing to remove. The Yara can be removed by the Oath of Kaya. They don't have any more removal. I'll take the spawn. Pretty good against Devotion. Especially if they don't run Agonizing Remorse to pick it off. Devotion by nature seems to have to play to the board. So awkward turn where the best they can do is run out an Yara. Not going to navigate this oven but I can play this Oath of Kaya and just get a Yara gone. Eating the food straight up, huh? Well, without a cat, it's the oven ain't so great, right? Rider, sure. Makes Grey Merchant a little better next turn. Gives me something to worry about. Let's see, what are they going to have that makes me discard a card? A Yark's Fenlurker? They definitely could. We don't have to be attacking to be successful. Let's start plusing Ashiok. Sir Conrad. Weird. I mean, I guess it combos with the cat pretty well. Whenever another creature dies or a creature card is put into a graveyard from anywhere other than the battlefield or a creature card leaves the graveyard, one damage to each opponent. Mill for two. Do I just want to blow these up? It doesn't say non-token, so all of these would cause me damage. That wouldn't be a good move. I think we just try to torture the opponent with the double Ashiok minus now. So we do this first, then we play Oath of Kaya to take out the rider, then we get in a nice attack. With Grey Merchant and Sir Conrad, they're going to have to choose what to keep, and we have another Ashiok minus lined up. So they choose which is oven right away. Sure. We're going to keep holding the passage for the reasons I outlined next turn. We take out their rider, we attack them. They they want no more. Enough, they say. This hand is all removal. Let's hope our opponent's hand is some amount of creatures and some amount of removal spells they don't get to use. I don't know if that's good, but I can't feel like I need it. I just, I need uh, some card advantage, something like that. Um, can't, I don't feel like I could possibly need more removal, but maybe I'll be proven wrong. Curses. Uh, let's see. I'm actually just going to try straight up killing it. 
What if they don't have the oven, right? But maybe that's not even worth it. Maybe we're just supposed to get our tap lands and our scries. I love this card. Don't know if it's great here. It is sort of card advantage. It's tempo. Let's see if the opponent drew the cat and the oven like the pro gamer should. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. See what they do. Another mono black devotion potentially. And there's the oven. Go away. Take one. All right. I don't feel like their clock is particularly menacing yet, so they're probably going to attempt to add to their board. That's where Absorb is pretty good. Or a removal spell. We'll try to buy some time, draw some land, draw some Dream Trawler action. Try not to lose to this cat. They didn't bring the cat back right away. What do they think they're doing? Devil. What would? What do I need to absorb? If I absorb the devil here, I prevent a lot of damage. I think that's worth it. Red Black Sacrifice, most of their stuff is just creatures and synergies with the oven anyway. Let's see, I can shock and have Tyrant Scorn open. I guess I want to keep my tempo good. But I'm not bouncing anything, I'm just plussing the Teferi. Make the Cauldron Familiar attack it. Angrass Rampage would be a punish, but I'll take the chance. So we need to go over top of the cat, literally. This is uh, a matchup where you really want to curve out and play Dream Trawler and have Ashiok plussing. Like, you have to do powerful things. And our hand is too reactive for that, so I'm having regrets about cards I've kept. But how do you know? You never know. They did have it. Well, looks like it's going to be one of those games where nothing can go right. They could have just as easily had a handful of Claim the Firstborn, but no. At least the clock isn't great. We can still draw back into it. But they don't want to give me the chance, do they? They don't just want to give me the... I guess I need the land anyway. We just rip the Dream Trawler. Rip the Dream Trawler. Laugh at opponent. Straight up Bone Crush face, huh? All right. So here's Cat. Let's go ahead and kill it before the oven is back up and running. Make the opponent work for their food, since they decided to bring it back on end step and try to go for damage. All right. Maybe we'll draw a time wipe. I wonder if I should deal with these now or either one of them, or if I should try to draw the time wipe. Let's see if we draw it. Would be very ideal. Also, waiting a turn means that the opponent isn't going to want to oven them. So it puts off the cat for another turn. Jesus. Deck hated this. De deck did not want to let us draw out of this one. But we're trying. We're trying. One pump. Good.
Oh, I should have let all that resolve. Now they get two foods instead of one. Oh, they sacrificed the wrong thing anyway. But what I should have done is made them sacrifice to the oven. So that, because if they had sacrificed the knight there, they would have had two foods. That was a little oopsie. Why are you bringing back the cat now? What if I remove it? But I don't. I just draw this land. <laughs> Should have held it in case I did draw the trawler, but I guess I'm tilted. Wow. How many lands was that in the row to close the game, close our run? Ugh. I guess that's the Esper life. Sometimes that happens. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Not good luck. I, I've had probably some of the worst. I've had a really bad magic luck run over three days. Anybody who's watched my Twitch stream knows that too, but it happens. You gotta keep going. I still love so many things about the set, so many cards in the set. I still got to four wins. Can't complain. So, uh, thank you for watching this video, as always. I will see you in the next video, and goodbye.